I thought I would do a video uh, to demonstrate all of the modifications I've done for my Harbor Freight Mini Mill right here. Uh, I've set up a seamless background here because my workshop is a little messy, so it's a nice clean shot. Um, and I'm going to walk you through everything that I've done over the years. And I've had this machine for several years, but done a lot of upgrades in the last year or two. So let's dive in. One of the first things I did was put in a belt drive upgrade to replace the fiber gears that were in the original machine. This whole kit came from Little Machine Shop and it gives you a belt drive with two different speed ratios here. So this is a really nice upgrade because very often the um, phenolic or whatever the heck they were, plastic gears would strip if you stalled the motor. These don't, they run just fine. And, you know, there's a tension adjustable knob here so you can move the motor back and forth a little bit. This is the original motor. And uh, I really like this. It was a good, up good upgrade. Another upgrade that came from the little machine shop is this um, pneumatic support, so spring support or shock absorber support for the head. Because the original design had a spring inside that was a little, not a little weak, shall we say. So... Um, this basically just retrofits right in. There's a shock absorber that goes all the way down inside the column and mounts to the head right here. So it goes all the way down inside. Very easy retrofit, just bolt on parts. I added start and stop buttons. There's a relay inside this box so that when you punch it, you can start the machine and uh, have a emergency stop button here. And there's a power switch here also. So yes, start and emergency stop. And just for fun, I made a beautiful brass speed knob here because the original plastic one was just ugly. It offended me. <laughs> and there's the original fuse back here. The main reason I uh, built this was because the only way to start the machine prior uh, with the original design was to turn it on like that, which I just found really annoying. And I want to be able to start and stop just whenever I want to. Scrolling up, um, you can see that I added a tachometer here. This is a standard off-the-shelf little part you can get for under 20 bucks on uh, eBay or uh, anywhere on the web, basically. So that mounted on here in a little, my, my own little box that I made for it, and there's a little sensor right here and a magnet mounted to the pulley. So when the machine is running, I have a clear indication of the speed. Very helpful to know your speed. Another add-on was this handle that I added to the inching knob for the quill. Um, on this machine, you don't have a separate movement for the quill versus the whole head. So you have coarse and fine positioning on the head. You can move it up and down with this handle. Then you can lock this in by bumping it in. It pops in that way. And then you would use this to raise and lower it incrementally, very small movements like that. Um, but I found it kind of tedious to sit here and turn this knob because I just I found it awkward. I didn't like it. So I made this out of aluminum with a little locking screw here. It just sits on very easily and it allows me to inch much more easily and much more controllable. Another add-on I did is this ring light here. Um, this is uh, an automobile ring light that's designed to go on the front of a car, of course. I think they call them angel eyes. I'll put a link below to where you can source these. I just made a little um, part here actually. I just used MDF but you could use uh, plastic or aluminum or anything just to give it a bit of a shielding and a way to mount it securely to the bottom of the head here which I used uh, just double stick tape to secure it. Uh, likewise I really like this little light right here. This is designed for sewing machines. It's very inexpensive, magnetically attaches and is removable. It stays where you put it. Um, very nicely positionable. So I'll put a link below on this little light too. Another major upgrade was a um, motorized controller for the horizontal travel here, the x-axis. Uh, this is an off-the-shelf part right here that is a motor speed controller and as you show it, see it shows percentage of speed so I can set how fast I want the motor to run and I can turn it off and turn it on. So it comes standard with connections for this button, but not for this switch here, which allows me to run right, stop, and left, and whatever speed I want. So for instance, uh, I, I no longer have a manual knob on the machine. So if I want to get to a close to a very fine position like that, I can just increment it along very, 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 very slowly and then find my spot and bump back and forth a little bit if I want to. And it's, it's easy to get within a thousandths very conveniently by just moving this switch back and forth and starting and stopping. And it'll whip along too. I mean, it'll do a full travel in about a minute. 
Here you can see the little right angle 12 volt DC gear motor that I mounted onto the end of the table here. So it's got some slight adjustments here so I can tweak the uh, centering of the drive mechanism onto the motor. Um, it worked really well. It took me about a day to machine this because I have a big aluminum bracket here and then another bracket here to uh, bolt it onto the end of the table. Here's a close-up detail looking at it up from underneath under the front here. So here's the front of the table and you can see it driving back and forth very nicely. That's at full speed. And then you can see that I can slow it way the heck down so it just ticks over. I built this riser here uh, to get the mill up to a comfortable working height. I'm a tall guy and this is, this is a better height for me. Um, it's made out of 3 quarter inch MDF, top and bottom, half inch on back and sides some lumber in the corners and some strong oak here to take some of the weight on the front so it doesn't bow down a little bit. And I use this for <clears throat> storage for all my oils. I've got cutting fluid, 30 weight oil, whey oil. I've got my uh, bluing and blue marker, which is helpful for marking out things. Um, and then also, let me talk about this. I found that it was really tedious to have to twist this endlessly to make a major change in the width of the uh, vise here. So take that off. I have a half inch socket on a hex drive here, put it in my cordless drill, and Bob is your uncle. That is really a sweet upgrade and I recommend it. Of course you'll have different socket heads for different devices, but they, you'll generally find one that will fit I think. Um, but let me walk you through what's in the uh, Craftsman drawers below here. So a lot of the standard stuff, some collet chucks um, for various, you know, hex chuck, square chuck, drill chuck, call it set. A lot of milling cutters for two flute and four flute, um, starting drills. I made this. This is a uh, slotting cutter head that I made on my mini lathe. Uh, fly cutters, assorted drill and um, mill cutters. One, two, three blocks, angled bracket, uh, some big cutters here and uh, assorted V blocks and parts there. So that's, that's all the, the go-to stuff. Some more parts here, um, blocks again, some uh, Dremel cutters. I use a lot of Dremel cutters. This is a hole punch. Uh, this is a uh, dial gauge holder I made for tramming the machine so that I can put a dial gauge on here and pivot it around and find a uh, perfect tram for the uh, column. Down here I have more collets, uh, American and metric wrenches clamps, uh, all of my tap and die sets for both uh, imperial and metric and a bunch of assorted drills and crap in the back there. The original locking casters on my tool chest were not sufficient to secure the whole thing if I'm turning the crank handles on the mill, so I bolted on these pieces of wood and these are uh, door locks. They're designed to mount onto a door and you can drop this down and lock the door in position. So with four of these pushed down, I actually kind of rock the cabinet back a little bit so I can push down firmly and raise the whole machine and the drawer set up a little bit so it's all sitting on these. That makes it really secure and then I can just pop release and roll the whole thing around to move it elsewhere in my workshop if I need to. One of the best upgrades I did to the machine is to install this touch DRO. Again, links uh, below in the uh, comments. Um, this is basically a standard DRO setup, except it all runs on an Android tablet. It's really nice, and I like the fonts too. You can choose different fonts, and uh, all the standard features are doing circle layouts and positioning and centering and all of the other things that you would have with a standard DRO. Um, for the uninitiated, DRO stands for Digital Readout. Um, so if I've installed X, Y, and Z uh, scales on all of the three axes, and I'll show you details in a moment. But, uh, you know, I can go in and do all the standard things like, you know, zero it out. Uh, where are we? There we go. And close that. And uh, you can see it running when I turn various things. So let's see, maybe release something there. Uh, very accurate. I can set it to show another digit of resolution, but I just don't need it. Uh, most of the work I do is down to a thousandths at most. I decided to use magnetic scales. So here's the one mounted to the column, and you can see the. Uh, sensor right there and all the way down the column. Pretty easy to mount these onto the column. You do, do need to be fairly precise so that it is all aligned and parallel and everything, but they go on pretty quick and easy. 
I mounted the x-axis scale here on the back, uh, which is a very common place for it on the table here. The sensor is mounted to the fixed location down below here. You can see it right there. Um, this way, uh, it's mounted so the magnetic surface is below, so it won't catch metal shavings. This is a much more sensible way to mount things like that, so it won't build up debris. Here's the y-axis scale. So again, here's the sensor head and the scale. Uh, this is facing up, which can catch uh, metal filings and stuff, so I have to really pay attention to keeping that clean. Uh, but it really works well. Of course, it has little rubber guides on here that, that help wipe the track clean, but you don't want any magnetic debris between the sensor and the head, because it'll throw off the calibration. But this works fine. So far, I'm very happy with it. So that's about it. Let me know if you have any comments, thoughts, or suggestions. I always welcome any ideas and happy machining.